is good. Motivators. Born in an era they considered to be golden. Touchdown in 95, that's when my soul was awoken. God bless me with this life, man, I should never feel broken. I hope to hear your wounds with these wisdom words I've spoken. I'm here for a reason and I'm gonna live my purpose. I'm rolling in the dirt, I ain't here to scratch. He wanted me to join. Mm. It was like, finally, it all come together. But oh it, okay it, okay now okay as it felt that way it was um kind of just the honeymoon stage because mm. once i really wanted to be serious about the music thing it just felt like our uh wavelengths and our our vibes were different yeah like we the motivation at separate it wasn't times, aligning so money to do it mm -hmm. so like when you have money to do it but the other ones don't have money to do it you don't want to use all your money right That's right how we all were um, right and it's just the bad luck that panned out with it. Mm. Um, after a while, there was just like some personal things I was going through. Mm -hmm. um, and he ended up, he was just lying to me about stuff. So once you're lying to me, I feel like you don't want the real me. You just want the oh, okay, me okay. that, that mm -hmm. you're trying to manipulate. Ooh, and it's also too, that child, like uh, the stuff that you went through as a child, you're like, no, nah, I'm not having this. Like you realize what you don't want and then you were seeing the signs that yes. were similar. So you're like, nah, that's flight or fight. I am, I'm seeing all this because around the time that I had taken acid, mm. and, you know, acid, it opens up everything for you. Oh, okay. Um, like abilities and stuff. Um, it just like your senses. Like mm. if you were to take all the senses, the five senses, plus your sixth sense, and just mm. open up the sixth sense, but amplifies everything else. Oh, shoot. I remember the first time I took acid, I was like, wow, I could really see why people go crazy on this, but it's cool. <laughs> That's what I was just gonna say. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's why people go crazy, because yeah. they like can't handle it. Yeah, because it's just- um, A lot. There are a lot of people that are in different parts of evolution. And mm -hmm. like, yeah. I've yeah. come to learn that, and I'm one to always want to share my experience, mm -hmm. and it's always been positive, but I've come to find out that my positive experience could be somebody's nightmare. True, um, that is true. So, in all this, I'm actually finding all this out, but I'm also using these psychedelics for an escape. Mm -hmm. So by the time um, we're about ending our friendship, uh, every time I hang out with them, I'm bringing something over, whether it's like mushrooms, mm. acid, and my favorite was Molly. Mm. Like just pure Molly. It wasn't no pills, no ecstasy like that. It was the real deal. Oh, sure. Um, and that is probably like the best feeling in the world for me, at least. <laughs> this is my preference. Preface if this gets uh, out to anyone that you shouldn't try it because it's not not worth it right it's a, right it's a love that you'll never ever be able to reproduce that's naturally. what i heard yeah. that's what i heard it's like that euphoric feeling yeah. that mean, you can never mimic or whatever somebody that can want undone that's cool mm -hmm. Try it once, but it's something that you should never get too involved with right. it's, it's, it's harder end. to leave yeah mm -hmm. it ends in a lot more misery than damn than Oh, okay, that makes sense because it's like it's kind of like that dopamine. The more you keep putting into your body or like serotonin and all that, the less you produce. Yeah. So then that's why it ends in misery. Yes. Just and, like alcohol. Uh, <laughs> toward, towards the end of our friendship, like me and John uh, meditated one time together mm, for the first time. That's for deep. Both of us. Like uh, I was just into like a lot of psychedelics. So one time there's this YouTuber, Aaron Dottie, who had this thumbnail was like instantly open your third eye with this hmm. technique and okay. we did that together and for me personally it was a very powerful experience right like i'd never felt anything like that before mm -hmm. and i need to see this video i'm ready <laughs> i'll send you the link after we're done talking but um he said he had a powerful experience too but i, I don't know because i'm not in this point of view right he could just been saying that to like right people with me mm -hmm. so um Towards the end of our friendship, I was doing a whole bunch of Molly. I was staying up um, like all night, like I wasn't sleeping at all. Mm. Um, but I'd still go to work and just deal with the the come down at work. Like I was, I was weird. Like I probably looked like twacked out. Damn, back yeah. But um, yeah, I just that was my my routine of misery at the time. Like mm -hmm. I was just you know feeling all the love and going through my i was really like giving myself therapy in a way like in mm. some instances i was really like coming to realizations like you, you're gonna need to change like oh, something's okay. gonna need to change yeah 
and if not it's you're gonna be miserable for the rest of your life mm -hmm. and um you know the opportunity exchange came and it did and at this point um if you were to ask them i i wasn't i i, I wasn't out like i outed myself as a bro oh, okay bro, yeah bro code for something but i looking back on it am a better person for doing it because i got mm. somebody out of uh, a very harmful situation okay mm um, okay and to them I, I hope the best for them mm -hmm. either way I and mean, i hope that they're doing the best for themselves right but um it just didn't like you guys just didn't match yeah 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 and um i started meditating after that like mm -hmm. after i cut everything off and that was like the last time i did molly too was this time when i just like broke my bro code because mm. of um what i was shown and i was just like this is not right like mm. i was so like in my thoughts i was like this has this is my change right here mm, and i remember okay. that night i was sitting on the toilet trying to go to the bathroom and i seen a, a girl in white and hmm. i don't know if you watch like a lot of like ghost adventures or like any of that but not really but it sounds like a ghost <laughs> yeah it's like kind of like the grudge in a way. oh okay and yeah just, or like the ring yeah yeah like the ring actually mm. yeah and um like in that lore is like it's supposed to represent a demon mm. so when i'd seen that it really scared me and mm -hmm. it actually uh brought back all the repressed memories from my grandma's oh, house oh shoot yeah it was weird the weirdest thing it was like as soon as i came back here when i was 16 mm -hmm. none of that happened oh. i was just depressed and that's just mm -hmm. the person i was but once i'd seen that it was just like everything came it, like triggered yeah it, mm. it was weird um and i didn't really take the significance at the time because sure that's a that's a common hallucination between mm -hmm. people that don't sleep and are on right. substance that they right. shouldn't be which uh, molly contained amphetamine so you can see mm. why i'd be up all night but um so i would i was meditating and finding finding my spirit I was really opening i've had a few instances where i feel like i've really opened my third eye mm -hmm. i've had like physical and visual reassurance of mm -hmm. it um and mental reassurance mm -hmm. of it too and about a month after my uncle died and it was the first time i've ever experienced death and so it was really hard for me because he was oh, just somebody yeah. that always looked out for everybody else mm -hmm. By the time he died it felt like nobody was looking out for him oh way. yeah like they were taking care of him but it, it was already too late at that mm -hmm. time like he had been neglecting himself that his health had just right and um i remember i was meditating the day that um he died because we all got together because we knew that it was it was about to happen like mm -hmm. really soon and i'm getting emotional because it's still stuff that i'm processing but right um I remember I was meditating and it was like 6 30 in the morning and something told me during that that I needed to go sit with him in his room because I, I didn't have a lot of time left um mm -hmm. so that's what I did I went in there and I put on Kiss which was our favorite band together mm -hmm. and we just listened to that for like five hours um was th this was recent um 2020 okay yeah. yeah it's still recent yeah um but this is just because i i just suppress these emotions. yeah like, i'm only like two weeks into this growth right now oh um, wow i mean so, that's still that's still good that you're like going like doing it though yeah. you know yeah because it's never too late to grow but, mm -hmm. um yeah we sat in that room for like five hours in silence and finally I broke the silence because I was about to uh, go to lunch with my dad. Mm -hmm. And basically, I told him, I was like, look, you've been helping us out so much. And you've kept secrets for me and you've helped me be a better person. And it's time for you to make a decision for yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, um, grandma, she was waiting for him. She's the only oh, one that's yeah. up in heaven. So, mm -hmm. Like, I told him, like, you're fine. Like, you can go be with her. Right. I know that since she's died, like, it's really been hard on you. Right. Like, we're okay. We're going to be okay. Right. And uh, he actually gave me his cross that my mom really wanted, and she was still talking about <laughs> it today. And he gave and, it to you. Because <laughs> um, they were, they were um, 
like for the whole week before I got there just because of my work schedule I couldn't get there um, as fast as them and she said that she had personally asked them to this and he said no it's just but oh sure right Aww. Um, and it was um the necklace that my grandma had given him given actually mm. so it's like that's why I really knew that it was um the relationship with, with his mom that was hurting him that he couldn't mm, have right. but by that time that I was talking to him like I know that he was unresponsive medically mm-hmm. but I could see in his like behind his closed eyelids the way his eyes moved and the way he breathed I was like I stopped for a second and when I was talking like you hear me don't you mm. so, um, at that point like they're just kind of in a vegetative state they're, right. in, that, they're, mm-hmm. they're in that dream state they're about mm. to release that DMT for seven minutes before they go oh, you know, okay. to heaven. Mm-hmm. Um, so, not even like 20 minutes after I left the house, my mom calls me and tells me he passed away. Wow, so it's like you needed that reassurance that maybe like he was only hanging on for you then. That's why he needed you to tell him. Yeah. Sometimes it'd be like that. Yeah. But, um, I remember... Um, we went and got the cross from the morgue because we were so emotional that we forgot to take it off. As, as, mm, right, as right. Um, and when I put it on, um, I remember it was the coldest feeling. Like, you hmm. know, it's cold metal, like, you get chills sometimes. Mm-hmm. This one was, like, a heavy feeling. Different. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, uh, I put it on, but it, it was, like, a heavy but light feeling. It was, mm-hmm. like, a happy, sad moment. Yeah, bittersweet. Remember, um, yeah, bittersweet. And I remember I was in my grandma's bed on her side um, with a cross on me. I was just, I was meditating once again because it, it was my scapegoat. The line mm-hmm. of music meditating that has been like me clearing my head. And right, really it's so nice. Uh huh. And being grateful for what is, what's mm-hmm. happening to me already. Um, and I remember. I uh, opened my eyes and I, I could see this this orb of light. Mm. And it felt just like the purest thing ever. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's uncle, that's my grandma. Um, right. It's one of you two or both of you. Right. And I kind of just had like this mental conversation with them. I don't remember what it was mm-hmm. anymore. But it was just unlike the past experiences. This was like total 180, like just pure love spiritual. right yeah so it was it was really nice for me to look back on all the evil that i went through mm-hmm. and know that there's still love that out out does it mm-hmm. and psychedelics have always shown me that love like mm-hmm. i've grown a lot from them um i know that like i really had a, a certain mindset toward people and um i remember that one day i was tripping and like they just told me it's all love like that's all you ever mm-hmm. need and i know that's like a hippie thing right right even people that believe in god that's all you need that's yeah see oh my gosh that's crazy because that's, that's for real yeah. that's pretty much what i say about like love in general is just the euphoric feeling mm-hmm. that everybody strives for and some people do it with love, some people do it with psychedelics, some people do it in different ways, but it's like at the end of the day, it's like the top tier is just like that euphoric feeling yeah. and people achieve it in different ways or call it something different. Yeah. So I had that experience with him and then I moved back and I just remember I, I had meditating hard at that point because every, every time I meditated, it was like, I'd come to some realization or like I just mm-hmm. feel a lot better about mm-hmm. everything and it was keeping that love inside me right and some somewhere in that time I was talking about I told my mom about this too I remember I was laying down in my bed at like four in the morning and I was meditating mm-hmm. and something went oh uh, sure yeah yeah but it wasn't a good feeling it was like this negative feeling that I remember oh, okay. a little bit but at this point I was a lot spiritually stronger like my dad mm-hmm. so when i seen that i just i shut it down I'm mm-hmm. like, this is you're not like you're not welcome in my orbit at, right yeah at all mm-hmm. and i just remember i like i pictured my whole body is just like this pure light and mm-hmm. it went away or so i thought um so 
I had met a friend after Legacy, and he was almost, he almost had me more emotionally connected than them, mm. just from, like, the way he helped me through what happened with them, and how he just, like, helped me, like, feel better about my music and the path that I'm choosing, mm. like, the person that I am, like, he always just talked way good about me. Right. Um, the only thing that I think he ever should have worked on is he liked meth. <laughs> you know, that's like, the only thing you know because like, he was like one of the best people i'd ever met mm. other than, than when he was influenced by that mm -hmm. but it was just a point where um you know he respected that i didn't want to try it but he'd always just like come on just, just try it. i'm like no like, <laughs> like that's you like you go do that one. right that's right cool. you're like that's one thing i won't do yeah exactly <laughs> that's one thing i always told myself and I mean, mm. there, there are a few others that I will never do, but you know, that's top. Cause One I'm of the just, top. I'm somebody that if I experience that love, I'm gonna press that button. <laughs> Addictive so personality. Um. Brush them off pretty easily, but at mm -hmm. some point I'm just like, guys, you got something you need to talk about. Be an <laughs> asshole right, like, uh, are you like for real? You're yeah. not kidding. <laughs> right, like what's the point of surrounding yourself in that energy? And he's just like, you know what? I didn't even want to be your friend in the beginning. Mm. I just, you were helping me out so much, driving me around when I didn't have a vehicle. Damn. And just like, so that's where that comes from. Um, so this happens and then um, it, at this point, like as soon as I figured out this feeling, it just became the escape that I was using mm -hmm. for all these feelings I was putting down. And uh, like, like the Molly, I started staying up all night and this one, it, this time it was a lot more manageable because I didn't get that come down, especially since it was something that just helped me focus. So I could mm -hmm. take more, and, mm -hmm. you know, crash after I got home yeah. from work. Um, but I still look like shit. Like they're if you don't know what people look like when they're like off off something, mm -hmm. then you don't know. But even like uh, my friend that has a problem with her her baby daddy, like mm -hmm. she's telling me like you look rough. Like, <laughs> like she's calling me out. Like, she's yeah, me how like you don't like, look healthy. Yeah. You're tired. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you know it's not a thing that she was trying to like make me feel bad. She's just like just pointing it out because right. one she doesn't want me to get caught. Mm. and two like she's looking out for me like, right right we've always looked out for each other since day one at work and it's pretty cool because i felt like i i've asked for somebody like that and mm -hmm. I got, like everything i ask for yeah I receive, and it's yeah kind of, kind of weird like i feel like there's a lot of people that get nothing that they ask for and mm -hmm. me, like i ask for something a few times and it just like pops up when i least expect it mm -hmm. well it also depends like how connected you are or like um what you also put into the universe like if you put all good stuff it's gonna come back to you yeah and i i mean that whole year that i just got fucked over like i still was just like i'm staying away from everybody but it's not going to change the person i am to the people around me right now mm, i'm not going to become mm -hmm. bitter because right. of things that are happening to me i'm mm -hmm. still going to do what i need to for the people i love right that's and, how it should be yeah and you know that's still how I feel to this day but the only thing that weighed me was like this past three months I was getting into my own feelings I was really just getting upset with my relationship and like the music and you know I probably could see in the last few shows like my energy just hasn't been mm -hmm. right but that's really what it's been like I've been trying to like rely on the Adderall to get me into the to the, mm -hmm. into the but it, it, that's not gonna be it still can't right because yeah. the energy speaks for itself yeah, it's, my energy it's right not all energy right um so i had like, a problem when i was performing it was a good liquor for me. yeah that yeah well that died down real, real fast after the crl show that we came here and i drank the whole pint yeah <laughs> You're like that's when i realized it i was drinking fucking like a freaking fish man right and and it's at first i wasn't and I didn't know you performed. Just, yeah, I used, to be, I used to be a rapper. What? I kind of still am every now and then. I oh, I'm just not before. as like. Oh, I didn't know that. I just thought you were an engineer. See, <laughs> what had happened was, is I was uh, when I first started making music. I uh, after or during college, like I didn't have any clients or anybody to work on to like perfect my craft. Mm. So I would I would just start writing my own songs to to give me stuff to work on. Yeah. yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. So, uh, 
and then it kind of evolved as me and Richard kind of got uh, uh, our kind of our friendship growing, and and he was making songs too, so we started making songs together, and then we're like fuck, these songs are dope. Let's go perform. Them. <laughs> yeah, right. So there was no alcohol involved at all until I moved back home after graduating and come and, party. And then yeah, then it was hey, let's throw a show, and then the next one was like. Yo, those shows are lit. Like, let's. Well, let's Keep lit. Going. It wasn't lit back then. It's it was just like that was fucking yeah. fire, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're right. Lit is just like the last like ten years, five years. Yeah, yeah. It's but, just you have that such a positive experience, like you know, replicate it. Yeah. Mm, yeah. That's true. And then eventually it was just like a wild. drunken freaking mess, yeah. and mm-hmm. people knew. Exactly. Like, they, I felt like people knew, like. Ah oh, shit! Here goes Jay Lynn drinking again. Like <laughs> they're getting belligerent drunk, throwing a show again. Yep. Mm, so that's right. exactly how I've been with all of my uh, substances. Cause literally, you know, I've never had a bad first experience. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Like even when I took the fake acid, I was like in school, tripped my balls <laughs> off, and I went to freestyle wrestling after. After mm. school, like I was the stupidest decision I ever made. Like, <laughs> I could not wrestle, yeah, acid, but it was still fun. Like, I had a good time. I told mm. my friend because I think it was like 420 or something like that, so everybody was like high, shit. anyways. Yeah, yeah, so it just like took the attention off me, I guess, a little bit. Yeah, um, that's crazy. Yeah, but um, how dare like, you not have a bad experience? Right. <laughs> like, um, probably like two or three, maybe maybe four weeks at the most now i was into that adderall run and i'd seen that that girl in white again in my house mm. but, I mean, it's just like yeah like a grudge or like a ring type of girl oh, out of the that, corner dude. of my eye yeah and it was fucked too because we had uh our blankets up over the blinds because mm. we didn't have blinds that covered right them. right mm-hmm. yeah and like i'd wake up and like every time i open my eyes i felt like somebody was standing over me but then i'd open my eyes i'm like it's just that fucking blanket like, fucking stupid blanket mm-hmm. i swear like the split second i open my eyes it's it's that that fucking thing again mm-hmm. but you know i'm just doing adderall and shit so i'm like bro you just need to chill out like yeah in your head. So it's like fucking, taking you somewhere that you shouldn't necessarily yeah. be and you know um adderall and weed they are known to cause or help induce schizophrenia if that's already mm. something that's in your in your genes your bloodline yeah and um i come to find out talked to my dad recently he said that his his birth mother uh is diagnosed with schizophrenia mm-hmm. yeah so um you know and i know this like this is just like already stuff that i know not not the not the family tie to that but the fact that it could happen mm-hmm. and i'm just like i don't even care anymore mm-hmm. like just i don't know if that's true my husband smokes like a freaking all the time and well, his mom had yeah. schizophrenia yeah i mean but it, it right it's chance, like but yeah it doesn't mean it's going to happen right it's just like you have a higher chance of it happening oh okay or maybe they just tell you that so that you don't smoke <laughs> yeah um smoking what though Weed. Weed? Yeah, Weed? that's what I'm like. What, and Adderall oh, together. Oh, like, oh together. together. Yeah, oh. Like, there have been people that have psychotic breaks on weed. Sure. Mm-hmm. But um, they were probably bound to have that in the first place. It's just their mind. I think that's how I am. Brings it over. Mm-hmm. You think so? Yeah, because I, I can't, like, handle I get it. paranoid. Yeah, I can't handle it. Yeah. So I just never do it. Every time I do, I'm just, like, wishing I See, didn't. And every time I get that paranoid, like, heartbeat feeling i'm like wow that's some good shit yeah see no me i feel like i'm like not gonna die but i feel like i can't breathe i just get yeah. paranoid about literally everything yeah. and i think it's because i'm already at a certain level of like my mindset yeah. so there's no anymore. exactly yeah. like there's like, nowhere else to go you're going out too far yeah like out. or not even it almost feels like like i'm more caged in mm-hmm. you know and yeah. i can't breathe i can't like yeah. do anything and i don't like that feeling right and it, I feel like that's the same way it's been with me with weed um because there was a point where like the meditating just like stopped mm. and it's just, like my thoughts just like took over everything like when i try to meditate so i just stopped no did you know so like when your thoughts come mm. that it's actually a good thing that means you're releasing stuff really so you have to just keep doing it 
Yeah, see, I stopped because it was just like, I'm not getting the same feeling I was. Before. Yeah, it's not, not going to be as, exactly, it's not going to be as peaceful, but the more you do it, the more yeah. that you're going to actually, th now what it's starting to do is actually starting to heal your brain, like physically, like starting to heal it, starting to mend the wiring and all that. Like yeah, that. that's what they taught us in, in the school, because hmm. they're like, no, your thoughts like are meant to be there. Yeah. And so but that's just flowing out because mm -hmm. you're just like in that flow state. Yeah, yeah, and it's like those are the things that you need to process, like and healing I hurts. Away too. Yeah, so especially like when it started, I was like, this, this sucks. I'm not right, this right. <laughs> I'm like, fuck. I had a really crazy meditating experience too, like after I got in a car accident, mm -hmm. and it was like you know, like that tetanitis sound that your ears yeah. ringing, and it got so loud. I like forced myself to wait. I could not wake up from the meditation. And I like forced myself and so much like I heard it physically mm -hmm. and my ears were hurting for like a few days after that. And so I got scared. But then when I talked to my um, meditation instructor, mm -hmm. she told me to keep doing it because that was what I needed right. to actually start healing my brain because I had a concussion. And he'd been at the studio uh, one time before and, you know, he just uh, had come to the summer jam because I sold him tickets and he was mm -hmm. like, I fuck with your music. And we were talking about psychedelics because he really likes psychedelics. It's pretty mm -hmm. crazy. Like, he'll do, like, fucking 10 taps of acid. Oh, like, shoot. Like, crazy shit. So, um, we drive up to Unimpaired on what I, what I love. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want to sit here mm -hmm. and be at a factory for the rest of my life. Right, right. And understand that. Like, I want to be that, too. Mm -hmm. But I also want to be happy. And right. I know I'm not happy making right. refrigerators right now. Yeah, like, it's like, not satisfying. I'm grateful yeah. for... The position and the money that i've gotten mm -hmm. i feel the manifestations that i put toward myself mm -hmm. but it was like as soon as i got that i didn't make as much as much music mm. and didn't invest in it because now i have responsibilities at work i have to listen to a radio all day like as right. soon as i get into that music state of mind i gotta drift off from it because i got something to go, i gotta go to oh uh, true and it used to be a point where i was making music for eight hours every day mm, okay and you know i just brings me down into this hole of feeling trapped. Like I'm not making any decisions for myself. I mean, loving her and wanting to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I know it's not really making me the happiest I could be right. being here with John or, you know, going out and trying to, you know, be something. Right, right. Um, Cause I already feel like nothing most days. Like mm. I have this voice that just tells me like, right. since I've been 14. So I just, it's just my, my combatant. Mm -hmm.